Hello and welcome to a video about cameras. So I've been using cameras here in my house for about four years and when I wired the house I planned a lot of camera locations and I currently have about 36 cameras that are running both uh, inside and outside and those cameras currently run into a Blue Iris server and I've been using Blue Iris for probably seven or eight years and it is a an easy to use program for connecting lots of different kinds of cameras. It primarily works with, with uh, IP cameras and it runs on Windows, which is not a fantastic thing, but it is proven to be relatively reliable. Assuming you turn off Windows updates, you generally can run it for easily a year or two years without a single error, so it has no obvious memory leaks. Um, and it can be configured to handle a lot of cameras. There are a couple things about running a lot of cameras if you have a lot of cameras, you generally want to run um, two streams from each camera, so a low resolution and a high resolution stream, which most cameras do support. And with that configuration, the low resolution stream is used for the motion detection, so it's actually decoded by the Blue Hour software in real time at the full frame rate. Um, and then the high resolution stream is what's streamed to disk uh, and used for later playback. And the idea being that if you only do the high resolution stream, then you end up having pretty significant problems having a lot of cameras because it's having to decode every frame of a high resolution stream to do the motion detection. And doing that with 30 cameras plus uh, can be challenging, even on a fast server. And I have it running on a dual Xeon uh, server that's got pretty good horsepower and pretty good RAM. Uh, but with a substream, it works significantly better, and so you can have it run pretty easily. And so I've been using that now for a while, and it's been working great um, with some caveats. The alerting stuff isn't great, and the, uh, the web interface is a little bit kind of old school. Um, but in this video, we are going to do some work to replace some of the cameras and switch over to Unify Protect, which is the NVR system that works with your Ubiquiti stuff. And so in my case, I'm going to start out doing the Unify Protect on my uh, UDM Pro Max firewall. And that UDM Pro Max firewall, I actually have two of them. Uh, it has two hard drive slots. So I'm gonna, I'll put it in two drives um, for redundancy and we'll see how well this works. And we'll certainly later on test out using their dedicated NVR uh, product. But for now, we're gonna give it a try with this and see how it works. And I'm gonna focus on some of the outdoor cameras, in particular, the cameras that go down my driveway out to my front gate. And so we're going to go upstairs and take a look at those cameras. I've put a new one on the house, plus replaced or added two additional ones down at the gate. And so we'll go take a look at those. And then we're going to look at the interface and how that works and get them configured. Uh, and we'll test out and see how the license plate recognition works and the object recognition um, of their AI tools. So let's head upstairs and take a look. So let's take a look at what we're going to do as far as cameras for the protect system for the driveway. So the driveway's over there and inside of here uh, there is a single mode fiber that runs all the way down to the gate and then this single mode fiber connects down to the server room downstairs and I have a little MicroTik SFP plus 10 gig switch so I have 10 gig all the way to the gate. So that goes into some conduit over here uh, and then makes its way down the driveway. And so I've started by adding one Unify camera up there. And there's also a Unify wireless directional antenna, which is the backup hall to the gate. So before I did the fiber, I did a wireless connection to the gate using uh, those Ubiquiti five gigahertz uh, relays and they worked really, really well. Um, you can't even see the gate. The gate's through the trees from here, and even through the trees, it works surprisingly well, and you probably get maybe 400 to 600, maybe 800 megabit a second. So we have one camera there, and so let's walk down to the gate and take a look at what we have there. So here we are down at the gate, and you can see the equipment's on a pole there, a transformer and a panel there. The house is back that way, so it's through the trees there. It's about a quarter mile drive, so it's a little less line of sight to the other antenna from there. And so on this pole, we have my original cameras, which are just two somewhat generic IP cameras that PoE powered and made it back to the house to go into a Blue Iris server. And then I have now added 
intention of replacing them. Um, one with this AI Theta camera, which is this little bullet camera as a cable, and it goes into a box here. And the AI Theta has a little brain box that has the most of the AI detection stuff in it, and then a PoE connection into the network. Uh, this box has our connection from the house, which is a another one of those MicroTik switches that has the SFP Plus ports on them. It's a really small um, PoE-powered switch that does uh, fiber, and so there's a 10 gig single mode fiber into here, and then a one gig out into this ubiquity switch here, which then does all the PoE powering of all the devices. So we have a little Raspberry Pi in here, uh, the gate controller, and then of course the cameras. So we have the AI Theta camera there, which points basically at the gate coming in. So it can read the plates, the front plates of the cars that come in and identify the car and people. And then around the other side here, we have an AI Pro camera and it is aimed down the driveway this way. And the AI Pro is a great camera, very high resolution. It also has optical zoom. And so I was able to use the optical zoom to frame in the driveway a little bit so they're capturing a slightly narrower view so we have more resolution for reading license plates. So as a car goes by, it's a little more zoomed in to try to see what the rear plate says. Uh, and then we still have the radio for the extra backhaul back to the house. Again, I'm using the fiber now, but the radio is there as a, uh, as a backup. And so that's what we have here at the gate. And so let's head back to the house and we'll see how the cameras look. So now let's go take a look at the software side of things. We're gonna log into my UDM Pro Max and take a look at the Unify Protect software and see how it's working with the cameras that we installed. So we're on the login kind of front screen of the Unify and you can see the Protect app is installed and running. And if you click on the storage button here, it will tell you how much storage you have. And I put in two 16 terabyte hard drives and by default, it does it in a uh, mirrored mode. So it's a little more reliable while having that configuration mirrored. And if you click on the protect button, it will launch the protect app so you can see all of the camera stuff. Uh, and you can see we have four cameras. I'm gonna go bigger here. Uh, the four cameras that we installed to so the front facing AI Theta, the rear facing AI Pro, there's a, a turret uh, on the driveway, and then an older G4 Pro at the front door. And so all four cameras are connected and streaming. I just plugged them in, hit adopt, and away they go. Super, super easy to do. Uh, you can see over here, it tells you what it thinks it can do in terms of the capacity of the UDM Pro Max. In this case, up to 11 4K cameras. Um, I made sure out there in VR, they're standalone in VR because the NVR has more capacity for more cameras and of course more storage. But either way, this is a super easy setup because it uses what's already in there for your firewall. Um, and so if you go over here, we can see the devices. So there's the four cameras. I have two other G3s that are um, currently going to Blue Iris that I may eventually connect over to here. Um, but if you click on detection, it shows you all the things that it's seen. And I configured it for both vehicle person and animal detection. Uh, and you can see that it's worked phenomenally well. You can see all the cars that it detected. And if you scroll down here, as an example, here's one of me driving in. And you can see that it recognized license plate and marks it as K7JBS, which is my call sign and my license plate. Um, for that car and uh, it works pretty flawless. There's one here of a Amazon truck leaving and sure enough it read the plate on that. C43972 Victor. And uh, it works relatively well. Um, I guess probably the best part is that it works really well for detection um, of vehicles. And then if I set it to only send me a note when there's a vehicle but not a person or an animal, it has been flawless in that detection. Um, in the past, I'd use some motion detection for the gate camera. And of course, it would occasionally trigger on all different things, including just the, the trees moving. Um, and so the AI detection of a car works really, really, really well. Um, the plate detection works pretty well. It depends a little bit on the speed of the vehicle. Um, above maybe 30, 35 miles an hour, it is a hard, much harder time catching the plate, which is not surprising. I think at those speeds, you, you need a camera that's like 100 frames per second to really get a good shot of a plate. Uh, but for driveway speeds, it certainly works well enough for detecting plates um, and identifying cars. And you can actually go into this recognition tab and see different plates that it's seen for each of the different cameras. Um, and that so far has worked relatively well in recognizing uh, both plates and cars. 
Um, there's virtually no configuration I had to do. Um, if you go into a device like the AI Pro, um, you can configure some things in it, like how long to record before or after an event. Um, and that's really nice because you, you also want to record a little bit before the event in case something's coming in or leaving. Um, it does have audio detection as well, which I have not tested yet, which is that things like glass breakage. So I'm going to try doing some glass breakage near one of them and see if it will trigger it. Um, and you also can set the recording quality both in frames per second and the data rate, which I have maxed out, of course, uh, and some overlays and a few other small things. But all the default settings work really well. Um, the AI stuff is sort of automatically configured and works, like I said, out of the box really well. Um, not a lot of need to tweak it. You can change in the camera what part of the camera you want to be looking for motion or for a vehicle. Um, and that may make the AI detection a little faster because it'll probably mask the rest of the um, uh, the rest of the stuff that's not part of that uh, mask. But even without that turned on, it seems to work really well. It detected cars flawlessly every time. Um, it detected animals. There was a deer in the driveway a couple of days ago, and it alerted me right away, um, as well as people. And so uh, overall, as with most things Ubiquity, it's just really, really easy to use. You plug in the camera and you hit adopt. And in contrast, you know, if you buy a IP camera and want to configure it in Blue Iris, you, you know, it's what's the RTSP URL for it? And oh, it's a different URL for this one because it's an unusual configuration. Uh, and it just takes a little bit more work to do. You have to generally tweak both the mainstream and the substream to get it to not use up too much CPU cycles and stuff like that. It's a, this really is very, very, very easy to do. Um, and the, the AI, I, recognition works really well, which is probably the main thing you want it for. So overall, I'm very, very happy with it. It's been easy to do. Um, I've got some more cameras to get set up. Uh, there are a couple more cameras on some trees down here that we're going to replace, uh, as well as one maybe out the back where the more of the animals are. And so I'll probably do a follow-up video to this one in a few weeks with those cameras uh, set up. But overall, just really easy to use. Um, I will also mention that uh, Go back over here. I do have another UDM Pro Max that I'm going to configure, and I'll do a video about this um, for high reliability. But one thing that's nice about using the UDM Pro Max um, for the Protect, as far as the reliability goes, is that if the first Pro Max fails and the second one takes over, it will take over and take over all of the cameras as well. So as long as I put a hard drive in that unit, then if you have a failure of your Pro Max, the other one will kick in and take over all of the Protect stuff, which makes the Protect stuff sort of high availability. Um, which is a fantastic feature, especially if you're using this in a company or corporate environment where you want to reliably have the cameras always working and recording. Um, and, you know, with my Blue Iris server, if that server fails or more likely it's Microsoft, so it gets rebooted because of an update uh, and blue screens, uh, you know, all my cameras are down until I log in to fix it. And so the idea that this will fix itself um, is a really, really good feature that makes it um, a very compelling solution. So, so we'll add some more cameras and we'll come back later on to report how it's working. But so far, I think it's been fantastic. Thanks for watching.